The Olive Garden. We all know it, we all love it. To me, super nostalgic. I was actually born in Italy, I'm half Italian, half Chinese, but growing up in Florida, my family would eat there all the time. Now, I'm known for my sandwich making on the internet, so Andrew has tasked me to make an Olive Garden inspired sandwich. We're gonna do just that. Mr. Han, thank you very much for having me. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, uh, we're gonna taste these and then you're gonna come up with a sandwich that's inspired by these this, these Tuscan dishes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm, I'm laughing, but I grew, I grew up on Olive Garden. I have a very soft spot for it like you. What should we start with? I think we gotta start with the breadsticks. Oh, it's it's what they're known for. Right, doing. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. After all these years, <laughs> the same perfect object. Mm -hmm. This looks all exactly like it does on the website. I'm pretty impressed that this is Delivery Olive Garden, or Nico delivered Olive Garden, and it looks like the shots from the website, which still aren't awesome, but you know. Next. Tour of Italy, I like, I love how they call it the Tour of Italy, and all these items, you just do not find in Italy. Yeah, these are straight up like Alfredo Italian is not, American yeah. dishes, yeah. And then chicken parm, like that is the most Americanized dish ever. And then same with the lasagna too. This is made with, uh, you can see the ricotta in there. Oh yeah. But traditionally you use bechamel, it's just way better. Yeah, no, I, I hate ricotta and lasagna. Yeah. On that note, let's dig in. Oh man. I mean, flavor-wise, it's still like, it's not bad. Yeah, no, it tastes like every lasagna I had growing up. Mm -hmm. Just straight up Italian-American lasagna. Not terrible. Yeah. Uh, chicken parm, can we cut through with a fork? Okay. But we'll say the chicken parm looks identical to the little <laughs> Yeah, they're yeah. both square, which... <laughs> they must make a different size chicken parm for the tour of Italy. <laughs> crispy. Mm -hmm. Whoa. I wasn't expecting it to be crispy. It's good. I mean, it's very it's standard. Nice. Everything's like... I mean, how do you f*** up chicken parm? Yeah. You know, it's like sauce, cheese, fried chicken. If you can't do that, get out of the restaurant business. Okay. What is this, Alfredo? Okay. Um, needs a lot of salt. Yeah, surprisingly low on salt for what's essentially fast food. Like all Olive Garden, Garden pastas, criminally overcooked. Mm -hmm. um, if it had salt though, I mean, it's a little gloopy, but it did also travel yeah. here, so I'm not gonna knock him for that. Uh, let's do some skedders. The most classic. Spaghetti Once again, meatballs. spaghetti and meatballs, yeah. also just not a dish you find in Italy. <laughs> the noodles are so soft. Oh. <laughs> it's like food for the infirm. The meatballs, like they're pretty well seasoned. Yeah, meatballs aren't bad. That pasta though is just horrendous. Oh my God. This is gonna be the worst defender though, because angel hair, you already overcook angel hair by default. It's impossible to make it al dente. So. I also just have never seen this combo with asparagus and diced tomatoes. Tomatoes? <laughs> also, real scampi, not necessarily mm -hmm. pasta. It's just- Oh, 100%, it's just a dish. Yeah, 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 but it's like garlic, and like parsley sauce, not all these add-ons. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna take the yeah, oh. You know, I weirdly like it. Yeah. The pasta itself, no, but like pa the flavor. No, the flavor is yeah. solid. Yeah. And the shrimp are not like gross or stringy or dry. They're actually like mm -hmm. not bad. I was really expecting to lay into this. Yeah. <laughs> We're actually having- This one scared me the most and it's success. so far my favorite. Shrimp are great. Yeah. Hmm. Not chewy. Way to go, OG. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Gotta wait. make sure. Oh, right. there we go. Oh, yeah. Let him up. How could we forget? Right. At Olive Garden, everything gets cheese. There we go. At least it's Romano. That's that's kind of legit. So far, I've been impressed with the proteins, so I got high hopes. I mean, the chicken this. does look good. Pasta overcooked. But flavor wise, this one's way. Remember how this one was just like under seasoned, nothing to it? I with the chicken. The cheese helped as well. The yeah, I know probably brought a little, little more salt. saltiness, and the ch the chicken's not bad. Yeah, this is what I used to get when I was a kid. I used yeah. to get the, ch the the chicken Alfredo, and I think this is like the most common. Item. Their most popular uh, dish, uh, both at Olive Garden, but also like Applebee's, Chili's. Everybody has a, a chicken Alfredo. It's got to be the most popular casual sit down dish of the chains. Okay. Also in Italy, never will you see chicken and pasta combine ever. Yeah, great combo though. Yeah. It worked. The Americans figured it out. And of course, my favorite part to this day, the salad. 
can't it's go wrong. the best yeah. salad with pepperoncini, just like we're in Mamma Italia. Why can't I? What's wrong? You can hear it has good crunch too, the lettuce, yeah. crisp. Mm. Yeah, lettuce isn't like soft and flaccid. Dressed grape. Gives you a little roughage amongst this nightmare of a caloric battle. It makes you feel good, mm. you know? Yeah. Okay, this is uh, what, the pasta fagioli? Is this a, another Italian-American dish or? So pasta fagioli is an actual like Italian dish, but you don't get all these add-ons like the meat in here. It's pasta and fagioli, so pasta and beans. There's just a bunch of, this looks like chili. I'm not a fan of that. It tastes like, like soup water. Like it's really low on flavor despite being so thick and hearty. It's gotta have like cornstarch in it or something. Um, <laughs> That, and also, I just don't like beans. I'm sorry, Brad. I don't like beans. Mm. I'm not a beans guy. Um, what was your favorite here? Definitely chicken Alfredo. You think you're gonna yeah. get some inspo for, for sure? For and to me, it's just so it's, it's also uh, nostalgic. Like, yeah, would eat that growing up. Yeah, I think I've definitely have enough to work with. Right. Well, I'm excited to see what you do. Just hopefully not <laughs> pasta fagioli <laughs> sandwich. No beans. No. Like a worse sloppy Joe. All right, we've tried all the food. I definitely have the inspo for it. The dish that stood out for me was the chicken Alfredo, by far the best. It's also what I grew up eating. Without a doubt, the breadstick will be the kind of base bread for the sandwich. We'll obviously make it a lot bigger. It's the part that takes the longest and it's also the part I'm most nervous about. I don't bake at all. I've never made bread before. Yeah, really hesitant, but uh, luckily I have Kendall here to help me out. Hopefully with her help, we'll definitely be able to make a giant breadstick. What are those? Don't giant breadsticks. Get out of here. <laughs> so to get started on making these giant breadsticks, we're going to combine three and a half teaspoons of salt, three teaspoons of instant yeast, four tablespoons of sugar, and six cups of bread flour. Give that a good whisk, then dump in two cups or 500 grams of warm water, six tablespoons of unsalted melted butter, and start mixing on low. And don't forget to raise the stand mixer before you start the mixing process. We're going to bump the speed up to medium and let that go for about 10 to 15 minutes. After that, a good way to see if your dough is ready is by conducting the window pane test. As you can see, I'm failing quite miserably at this, but Kendall is showing us how it should be looking and how it's actually done. Once the dough is ready, we're gonna add it to a greased up bowl and give it a nice little love tap and then cover it with greased up saran wrap so it doesn't stick. We're gonna let this rest in a warm place for one to one and a half hours until double in size and looking like this. We're gonna remove it from the plastic wrap and then give it a very satisfying punch. Once deflated, we'll evenly divide the dough into six portions, each weighing about 235 grams. And since I've never done this before, Kendall's gonna show me how to shape the dough into a breadstick form. The best way to do it is to press down on the dough, flatten it out, and then tuck and roll the dough until it forms a giant log. We're gonna roll out all six of them and lay them down on parchment lined baking sheet about two inches apart. Once again, these will need to go and rest until double in size, and this will take about one to one and a half hours. Once doubled, we're gonna toss these bad boys in the oven and watch them bake at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 12 to 14 minutes or until golden brown. And there you have it. We have successfully made giant Olive Garden breadsticks, and I just simply couldn't wait. We did it. We fucking did it. This is also really hot. I gotta put this down. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> we have giant breadsticks. They're gonna cool, and then we'll brush it with butter. And then we brush the butter immediately. Immediately, yes. straight out of the oven, <laughs> while they're hot. So not only does butter give it a nice golden shine, it'll be used as the binder for the seasoning, salt and garlic powder. This is so sexy. It is light, look at the bottom of that. Oh, it's still scorching hot, I'm gonna put it back down. Wow, let's go. After we finish admiring our giant breadsticks, we move on to the chicken cutlets. We start by taking two chicken breasts, covering them with saran wrap and pounding them out to a nice even thickness. We then make our breadcrumb coating, which consists of one cup or 70 grams of panko, two tablespoons of finely chopped fresh parsley, half a teaspoon of fine sea salt, quarter teaspoon of black pepper, and two minced garlic cloves. Once that's all mixed up, we then set up our coating station. We're gonna dip the chicken in flour, then egg and breadcrumb and fry this in olive oil until nice and golden brown. This should take about three to four minutes total until it's looking a little something like this. 
Next up is Alfredo sauce. And for this, we add a quarter cup of butter and one cup of heavy cream to a saucepan. This is gonna simmer on low for about five minutes. After that, we'll add one and a half cups of freshly grated Parmesan cheese, some fresh black pepper, and we're just gonna whisk continuously until it reaches a nice thick consistency. Once the sauce is done, we'll go ahead and blanch our broccoli rob. We're adding one pound to a large pot of salted boiling water. This cooks just for one minute until it turns bright green. And then we're immediately gonna dunk it into ice water to stop the cooking. We're then gonna heat two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil and add in two thinly sliced garlic cloves, our blanched broccoli rob, and then we'll season it with red chili flake and salt and pepper. We'll add a big squeeze of lemon, give it a little toss, and the broccoli rob is all done. All that's left to do is cut the giant breadstick in half, and we're gonna toast this in a hot pan with some melted butter. And now it's time to assemble. Starting by giving our base layer of our sandwich a generous portion of our Alfredo sauce. We'll then top it with our crispy breaded chicken. More Alfredo sauce. Then topped with broccoli rob and in classic Olive Garden fashion, we will make it rain with fresh Romano cheese. Add the other half of the breadstick and cut it in half to reveal the epic cross section. So tell me what we got, what we got going All on. All right, we got giant Olive Garden breadstick. We made sure to season this one, salt, garlic powder, base layer Alfredo sauce, crispy chicken cutlet, broccolini, more Alfredo sauce, top with some Parmesan. Everything great about Olive Garden in a sandwich, in a breadstick sandwich. And I said it before off camera, I'm saying it on camera, breadstick sandwich, billion dollar idea, give this man a company. Or do it with us, never mind, we own it, never mind, this is trademarked. Let's eat it, oh my God, there's heft it's to it. Ooh. <laughs> That's fing nuts. Sandwich so good, you gotta wipe your mouth after each bite. <laughs> mm. That's crazy, dude. That's really, really good. I think this oh, bread man. may be my new favorite for sandwiches. It's insane. This is killer. It's so soft, but it still has like mm. structure. It, it compresses in the mouth in that nice way. And there's not like too much, I was worried about this being a really gloopy sandwich with like, you know, Alfredo sauce. Mm -hmm. But this is killer. This is so good. Only little change I would do is maybe the, <laughs> the broccoli raw. <laughs> Chop it up a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah. I only have one thing to say, and that is long live the sandwich king. This is evidence of your being the sandwich king. I mean, I, knew, I already knew it, but now I've tasted it. Dude. I really hope you're proud of yourself because that, how did you eat so much of that in the Three time months. we've been standing here? <laughs> he doesn't have, just have asbestos mouth, he has giant mouth. Wow. I eat fast. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> well, dude, that's incredible. You're the sandwich king. Thank you so much for coming through. Hell yeah. And feeding me this delightful thing. I'm gonna take this and eat this off camera. It's not beard friendly food. Hmm. Great.